Raul Nefer and men uh, divides the six acts of creation into the creation of the celestial government and the creation of the celestial workers. The celestial government exists to establish and maintain order. It is composed of Ma'at, Harukahuti, and Haru. The roles of each member of the celestial government are consistent with their positive meanings within the tree of life. Uh, here I'm going to read from uh, pages 70 through 72, and unless I say otherwise, what you hear for the next few minutes will be uh, me reading from a man's text. When I interject my thoughts, I'll let you know. The first act of creation, which corresponds to the fourth sphere of the tree of life, is the framing of the laws reflecting the workings of the forces of the third sphere. These forces are deployed through a structure that allocates to all things its place in time and space for the purpose of maintaining order in the world. Order is essentially dependent on the existence of interdependence, oneness between things or among things. Now this is me talking. That was the first act of creation, that's Ma'at, which is uh, the laying down of divine law in a way that's consistent with the creative faculties that have been uh, brought forth in the first act of, uh, second act of uh, manifestation. Here we go, the second act of creation. I'm reading from uh, page 71. Next has created the means of enforcing order, the fifth sphere, that's Harukahuti. No thing can encroach upon another. Yet, although things are protected, the chief interest is the preservation of the whole. So the purpose of, this is me talking, the purpose of the second act of creation, uh, to reiterate, is to maintain order through the enforcement of divine law for the good of the whole. The third act of creation, this is the work of the sixth sphere. The work of coordination is based upon the canon of the fourth sphere. Its application to specific situations is communicated to the sixth sphere by the second sphere. That's a lot of spheres going on there. Let's <laughs> be talking. Let me see if I can break it down a little bit. The sixth sphere, which is the third act of creation, corresponds to Haru. You will remember from the tree of life that Haru is free will. When Amen writes, the work of coordination, that is the work of the sixth sphere, Haru, is based upon the canon of the fourth sphere. So coordination is based on an understanding of divine law, Ma'at. Its application to specific situ situations is communicated to the sixth sphere by the second sphere. It's a very important distinction. The communication to Haru comes through Tuhudi. When we look at the story of Osir, we will see the centrality, the importance of Tuhudi to uh, providing uh, intuited and directed, to, to providing divine law, divine will, rather. So in order for Haru to truly be himself, herself, he must uh, intuit the right direction from Tuhudi, that is, from divine will as opposed to uh, relying entirely on his education or his training. Uh, this concludes this part of the discussion, of the third act of creation. Next, we're going to go to the um, creation of the celestial workers. Hold on. And now we turn our discussion to the um, creation of the celestial workers. Uh, a man writes, now that the means of establishing and maintaining order are in place, the supreme being proceeds to create the faculties slash deities that are directly in charge of the work of creating the physical entities. Along this line, then, the fourth act of creation, which corresponds to Heteru, is talked about as follows. It is the imaginative faculty that takes the set of forces governing a particular set of events or things and organizes it into a concrete objective that is a complete image. It is the great celestial designer, inventor, artist, goddess of beauty, harmony, etc. Again, this is Heteru, the fourth act of creation. Let's go to the fifth act of creation, which corresponds to Sebek. In the preceding stage, I'm reading here from uh, page 72, 
In the preceding stage, we arrived at the design of the species of things. But, as we know, species are broken down into individual existences. This faculty, the ape sphere, has the task of making the distinctions that will distinguish each member of a species from another by creating variations amongst the parts of things and events. Uh, that sounds very, uh, this is me talking obviously, that sounds very uh, intense and perhaps even, even dense, but uh, dense in terms of uh, the amount of information uh, conveyed in a brief uh, number of words. But I want to suggest that the fifth act of creation can be thought of uh, in terms of uh, definitions, in terms of specifics, dividing things up, uh, looking at external differences. Uh, that is the major thing that goes on. Classification, think of it that, that way. Uh, and in the next section, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how these things apply to day-to-day uh, -to -day life, but I want to get through this part first. And then finally, the uh, sixth act of creation, a man writes, still from page 72, uh, about the sixth act of creation. The next faculty created, the ninth sphere, uses all of the preceding shaping factors to make a vehicle that will serve to coordinate physical energy, matter, into the physical thing or event. This vehicle is the soul of the individual thing or event. In the comedic tradition, it is called the ka and so on. Because this faculty is directly in charge of the organization of physical energy matter into the, into the creature, it is referred to as the mother goddess creator of all the living and of earth, Oset, Yemeya, Nana Ise, and so on. 